Hi, welcome to another video of Stream Developers. In this tutorial, we will create a video calling app for React Native. We will use the Streams Video SDK for React Native and build a WhatsApp style video calling experience with great customization options, reactions, and picture in picture support. All calls will run on Streams Global Edge Network for optimal latency, reliability, and scalability. If you are new to stream video, go to our website and check developer, video and audio. As you can see, the SDK is available for React, iOS, Android, React Native, Flutter, JavaScript and Unity. Let's take a look at what we will build in this tutorial. As this video demonstrates, the left preview shows the iOS version of the app. The Android version is the one running on the right side video preview. You can get the final React Native project in this GitHub repository under the folder React Native. In this folder, you can explore the code base, test the app on iOS and Android devices. In order to build this app, you will need VS Code for the actual development, Xcode for iOS specific settings, and Android Studio for configuring Android specific settings. Let's begin with the following chapters. We will create a new React Native project in the command line. Then we will install the video SDK of Stream. We will add iOS and Android specific settings. Then we will create home and call screens. And finally, set up the video SDK so that we can make our call. Let's open Terminal and create a new React Native project. You can use your favorite command line tool like WAP. I will create this project on the desktop. create a new React Native project, we will use this command followed by the project name. So let's call this Native Call. In order to proceed, I will press Y. So this is going to create our new React Native project. Once the installation is successful, you will get a welcome screen that looks like this. So you make sure you have all the green check marks, like what is shown over here. Now that we've created a new React Native project, let's launch VS Code and start the actual development. To bring our new React Native project, I'll go to the location where I saved it and drag it to this empty window. Use the mouse. Now we have an empty React Native project in VS Code. So let's look at how to install the video SDK. To do that, I'll go to the toolbar and click terminal and choose new terminal over here i'm going to paste this command so the command will install the core video sdk as well as react native ui components you can see over here we have now successfully installed the video sdk so this core dependency we just installed brings the react native video sdk and its ui components for building video calling experiences the video SDK also has other dependencies, so let's install them all. The first one is React Native in Call. This handles call actions like muting and unmuting, turning the video camera on and off, and playing ringtone during outgoing and incoming calls. It also depends on React Native SVG, which is an open source SVG library for React Native. The next one is NetInfo, which provides information about a call's connection status. And the last one is Notify. It is an open source React Native notification system. So let's install each one of them. I will first install React Native in Call Manager and the other three as well. So the last one is Notify. So we have now installed the React Native Video SDK as well as its other dependencies. Let's now look at how to do iOS and Android specific settings. We will begin with iOS. Since the video calling app requires the use of the user's camera and microphone, we need to set permissions for that for both Android and iOS. So let's configure privacy settings for camera and microphone on iOS. So in our native call project, we will go to the iOS folder and look for the file appdelegate.mm. So over here in the iOS folder, I will click native call and find the file appdelegate.mm. 
So in this file, we are going to add another import here. That is stream video React Native. So in the launch options closure, I will add this code to declare permissions. Next, we need to add a string message for the permissions. So we can do that in info.plist. Below this key, CF bundle name, I'm going to add the following keys. So once users try to use the app for the first time, they will get this prompt. Native call would like to use your camera. The product name is native call. The next one is for microphone. So users will get the prompt. Native call would like to use your microphone once they try to use the app for the first time. So that is how to configure microphone and camera usage permissions for iOS. Let's do the same thing for Android. We need to expand the app folder, SRC and main. Let's open the Java folder and select main application .kotlin. Here we are going to add this import. So here let's add this below the on create method. Next in Android manifest.xml, I will add the following in the application tag. Next in the build.gradle file, under the app folder, we need to specify the version of Java we want to use for this app. There are two versions of Gradle files. You can see there is one over here that is under the Android folder, but we need to select the one under the app folder. So below build types, let's add compile options to set the versions of Java we want to use for the app. The next thing to do is to turn off the use of newer Java language features. We can do that in the Gradle properties file. So let's add that over here. So what we are doing here is to turn the sugaring to false. So this is how to configure iOS and Android specific settings for the app. Let's move on to the next by adding home and call screens. To add the home and call screens, we need to add a new folder. So within the main root folder, we are going to add a new folder and call it SRC. Inside this folder, we will create two files. So let's add the first one. That is the call screen. That will be a TypeScript file. Let's add another file for the home screen. So in the SRC folder, we have the call screen and the home screen. For the call screen, let's add the following code. So here we import the call object, stream call, and the call content component of the SDK. So the call content component of the SDK is a container for building fully featured UI for the calling experience. So on the call screen, we create an instance of the stream video client with the help of the use effect hook. We check to see if the video client is successful. Then we create and join the call. So this call.join method you see here does not only join the call, but also allows real time transport for audio and video when the call creation is successful. And if the call has not established yet, we display the text join in call. As I said before, using the call content component, we display fully featured video calling UIs and call participants. To learn more about this component, you can visit the call content section of our documentation. So this is all about the call screen. Let's look at the home screen. For our home screen, I'm going to paste this code. So the home screen is very simple. Once the app launches, we display a welcome message as well as a button to initiate the call. So once we tap this button, we go to the call screen we added previously. That is all about adding the home and call screens. Let's move on to the next by setting up the video SDK so that we can make a call. To access the React Native video SDK and start making calls, we need a valid user token. If you are building a production app, the user token should be generated from your server side. That can be done at the sign up or the login phase. So when users try to log into the app, you return the token to authenticate them and allow them to make a call. If you already have Streams dashboard account, you can use your API key and our token generator service to generate a user token for testing purposes. If you don't have a dashboard account yet, you can sign up for free. I will add a link to the description of the video. So the SDK's video client should always be available when the app launches. Therefore, you should implement it in the location of your app where lifecycle events occur. To make things simple and straightforward, we are going to do the implementation in the main app TypeScript file. So let's open app.tsx 
and replace the content. So I will select everything here, delete and replace with the code I have in the clipboard. Here we make two imports, stream video and stream video client. Then we define the following properties for the user. Next, we create a user object using user ID and name. Then we initialize the stream video client with an API key, user and token. You can get the API key from your stream account. And using that along with our token generator service, we can generate the user token for testing purposes. You can get all these user credentials from the video calling tutorial in our documentation. I will add a link to the description. You will find it under step four and the user credentials will be similar to this image. So before you can run the app, you need to fill in all this user information. So this is a summary of how to set up the video SDK for React Native. You can learn more about this section in our documentation. I will add a link to the description of the video. So this is all we need to do to build our video calling app for React Native. Let's now run it on iOS and Android. Let's begin with iOS first. We can use Jan iOS to run it with the iOS simulator. If you want to run it on an Android simulator, you use Jan Android instead. Since we want audio and video capabilities, we are not going to run it using the simulator. We want to run it on actual devices. So running Yarn iOS or Yarn Android will start the Metro server. So you can see over here, the Metro server is already started. So we can use I to run it on iOS, A to run it on Android, or use R to reload the app. To run it on iPhone, I'll go to the location where I saved the app. We go to the iOS folder and open the file nativecall.xc workspace. You can see over here, we already have an Xcode file, but we open this file. So I will click and open it with Xcode. Before we run the app, make sure you select the root folder and go to sign in and capabilities. Here we need to set the team and bundle identifier for the main target and the test target as well. So you can see here, I have already set the team and here I have specified my bundle identifier as well. If I click the test target, I have already set the team and the bundle identifier as well. You can see over here, my iPhone is selected. So I'll click the run button to run it on my iPhone. The build was successful and the app has now opened on my iPhone, as you see here. So this is the home screen we added in VS Code previously. So I'll click join video call. That launches the call screen. So here we can perform some call operations, such as turning the camera off and on, muting and unmuting the audio, and flipping the camera. On the top right, you can see we have only one participant. To join multiple people in the call, we are going to use the companion web app. So I will bring the browser and join from the web. This is an article in our documentation. I will put a link to the description. So here I will click join call to open the companion web app of stream video. Let's click join call again. On the iPhone app, you can see we now have two participants, one from the web and one from the iPhone. That is how to run the app on iPhone and use the companion web app to join the call. Let's run it on Android as well. I'm going to open Android Studio. To run the app on Android, we need to install the Android 13 Tiramisu SDK. To do that, we launch Android Studio and click the three dots on the top right and go to SDK Manager. Make sure you select the Android 13 Tiramisu SDK and all the highlighted options over here. Once you do that, we come back to Android Studio. You can see on the top right, I have attached a physical device, which is my Motorola E32. On the toolbar, it is also selected. So let's click this button to run it on the Android device. You can see here the connection was successful. So it is now running on my Motorola E32. So you can see here, we have the home screen on the Android phone. Let's tap join video call. And now we have joined the video call from the Android device as well. So this is how to build an Android and iOS video calling app with React Native. Using the stream's React Native Video SDK, 
we only scratch the surface of what you can do with the video SDK. However, your takeaway from this tutorial is a functional video calling app similar to WhatsApp calls. To go beyond the fundamentals, you can check the customization section of the video calling tutorial on our website. The various video SDK components and our cookbook.